Well, this is Campbelltown on the Mull of Kintyre. And they've got a cinema here. And I believe that Paul McCartney's actually been here. It's called The Little Picture House. Or as they say around here, The Wee Pictures. Hey. <sighs> Here in, in Campbelltown, I've just been, been here for the last day. Very nice place, beautiful views, the water, the boats. But not a lot of people about. It's not a huge town. No, no, it's not. It's uh, about 6,000 the population. At the turn of the century, and last century, it was double that. It was about 12,000. Because we had uh, something like 32 distilleries. I'm a, an ex-geography, modern studies teacher, and I used to tell my pupils here, that in the year 1892, Campbellton produced 1,892,266 gallons of whisky, which, as far as I know, is still a world record. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but John, of course, uh, years ago, there wasn't simply this place. There was another cinema in this quite small community. Right, yes. So that was the, the Rex, wasn't it? That was the Rex, yes. It was built in, it was built in 1938. Everybody said it'll never pay, but what saved it really was the war coming along and uh, all all the, uh, the naval services being based here and so on, and the airport at Macrohanish. Uh, you know, the population of Campbellton doubled, or trebled even. But was there a big rivalry between the cinemas? I mean, were they at daggers drawn? You know, you don't have anything to do with no, the No, no, they weren't, no, they, they, they wasn't. There was a rivalry, but it was a friendly rivalry, you know, a friendly rivalry. There was one occasion, for instance, when the staff from each cinema, you know, on the night off, they could get in for nothing to the opposite cinema if they wanted to see a film, you know. And there was one night, the Rex closed early, and this one here was still running. So everybody else had seen the film and were all out, but the, the staff of the Rex was sitting watching it, and the projectionist came down looking and came looking, and eventually he came up and shut the whole thing up and said, get out of here, you, you so-and-so, it's not showing the film just for you. <laughs> These are the sort of still things that went on. Which you wouldn't get in the big cinemas, I agree. No, maybe not. But of course this is called, uh, very simply, uh, the, the Picture House. Seems, well, I have to say, rather kind of dour, Scottish, straightforward way of calling it. I mean, didn't you ever, as a young man, wonder why this place was called, what's it always called, The Picture House? Yes, it always was called The Picture House. Funnily enough, the local name for it is The Wee Pictures. This is the contrast between it and the Rex, which was, well, they didn't call it the big pictures, but it was, I mean, twice the size of this one. No, no, it was always the picture house, this one. And uh, as I say, it's, it's still going and long may it continue. Now, well, what is your connection, though, with, with this cinema? I mean, how far back do you go? Well, I started here on 4th September 1988 as a joiner, doing the place up. Yes. Uh, previous to that I was unemployed and I heard they were looking for joiners. So I applied on and, and a Friday and I started here on the Monday. But then you came in, in as a joiner, but I suppose gradually you learnt all aspects of, of how to run a cinema. The cinema opened on the 29th of May, 89, and I was still employed as a joiner, doing the offices out the back, doing them up. Mm. And the projectors at the time wanted someone to learn to do the, the films so he could get a night off. So I just used to watch him odd nights here and there and then through the day when I was supposed to be doing the joiner work I'd come in and try it for myself and run the films and that was it. So so you're the only sort of full-time employee so what do you have to do to keep the cinema going? Um, I order all the films, make all the films, um, do all the returns for the films, do the wages, order all the confectionery, the ices and cans, everything like that. But do you still do any of the projection work still? I do, I'm a projectionist as well. <laughs> is there a, a real future for the, the wee pictures? Aye, there is, aye. There's got to be. There's not many cinemas like us left in the country. If I should become a stranger Know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia's been everything I've ever Uh, Peter, you were born born into a cinema family. Well, my grandfather and two or three other businessmen in Campbelltown floated the Picture House Campbelltown Limited, the company, and they involved a Mr Burnett who owned cinemas in Glasgow 
and uh, they raised the money to build the place and it was the architect was a Mr. Gardner who was a distinguished architect of the day and it was built in 1913 opened in May of 1913 to a distinguished audience. What was the film? The film, I understand, was Les Miserables. And the supporting feature was The Raja's Casket or something like this. Both rather exotic, silent films, particularly for Campbelltown, I imagine. Indeed, yes, uh-huh. i uh, seen a great appreciation by the audience. My mother was there with her sister and uh, a wee girl, and she, they ran about. I think they spent most of the day in the picture house and didn't go home for their tea and went home eventually and got into a row. <laughs> yeah, but your family's uh, been associated with this cinema right since the start. I mean, it's where Dad went to work for you, of course. But, I mean, the architecture's a bit peculiar, isn't it? Well, it was purpose-built as a cinema. I mean, there was no question of it being used for uh, anything else other than showing films, so that was why it was specifically made like that. Yeah, but then uh, behind you there, of course, there is a, a rather strange edifice in the corner of the cinema by the screen and another one up there. There were additions in the 30s they were put up, uh, possibly at uh, the same time as the talkies, I'm not sure, but certainly it was an added feature which was added to the cinema, give which a certainly give it a lot of charm and, and a little hint of Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, they're rather nice. But for generations of Campbelltown children, it's where, you know, Snow White <laughs> lived kind of thing, you know. And many, many children, you know, used to ask me, and come up and say, what, what's who, who lives in these wee castles there, you know? Now, I gather your family has been involved with this cinema for many years. You're back here now as the headmaster or, or the rector at the, the school, but you're still interested in the cinema. I mean, what is the family connection? My aunt and uncle, um, between them, had roughly 88 years' service to this cinema. Um, my uncle was chief operator. Uh, my aunt came in, in during the war to become a, a projectionist. Oh, that was where the men had to when go to. The men all went off to the war. To fight, yeah. And... Uh, she came in, did part of her training initially with my uncle, and that was how they met, and uh, eventually they got married. And after the war, when he came back and, and took over, and she would help about the place too in one, one capacity or another. Did that mean you got in free? If my uncle was around the door, yes, uh, <laughs> I would get in free. And uh, it, that was very, very handy. And then later on, rather than getting in free, I came in to, to help around the place. And that just came from hanging about the place and getting under their feet. And rather than put up with that, they gave me things to do and eventually I was taught how to work the projectors. Now, here we are uh, on the edge or on part of the, the Mull of Kintyre, aren't we, nearly? We're, we're, we're pretty much on the Mull of Kintyre, yeah. yeah. But obviously the Mull of Kintyre is known throughout the world because of its, I suppose, its most famous occasional resident, Sir Paul McCartney. Has he ever had any dealings with the cinema? He donated to the fund which enabled us to take it into community ownership. He also... Um, hired the place. Uh, he has the rights to the Barry Holly music, as you may know, mm. and was uh, a major contributor, a major investor in the, the Buddy Holly story. And when that film was in uh, production, the copy was brought down here and shown to him and his family before it was uh, premiered in this very hall. In this area, as it is all over Britain, all over the world, I suppose, one's aware of socio-economic changes. Work is difficult, it's drying up, there's a lot more poverty. Is it going to be possible to keep a good-sized cinema like this going in an area like this, do you think? I'd like to think there would. I think it's very much related to the, the future of cinema itself. If cinema has a future, then there's no reason why it shouldn't have a future in a place like Campbelltown. We shouldn't be in a situation where we have to drive 100, 150 miles to go to a multiplex. Places like this have character. They're places where it's still a good place to see a film. We've brought the standards up, projection and sound and so on. People can see a film here in very, very broadly similar conditions to what they would see it in a multiplex, but with a bit more atmosphere, perhaps. And I think the magic of the cinema is most easily to be found in a place like this. And as long as there's magic in cinema, people will continue to come. So it all began in 1913, and you can still see all the latest films 
here at Campbelltown. Wasn't it the bard of the Mull of Kintyre who once memorably said, Obladi, Oblada, life goes on. And so do the wee pictures. <laughs> <laughs>